By the 1950s, the Western world recovered from the aftermath of two world wars and the Great Depression, refocused its efforts on building prosperity. Instead of tanks and planes, factories turned out refrigerators and TVs. In both England and America, burgeoning middle class emerged. America especially, with its abundance of resources and vast geography, became quite wealthy. Flush with cash, it became a consumer society. And the advertising industry was intent on keeping it that way. Billboards and newspapers bombarded citizens with images of the latest and greatest labor-saving luxury items that modern Americans deserved. As the 50s became the 60s, cracks began to develop in this veneer. Racial tensions flared as minorities demanded their share of America's economic opportunities. A Cold War with Russia kept the threat of nuclear destruction in the world's consciousness. America's involvement in the Vietnam War created tension between the establishment and a young generation of people being sent to fight it. These young people began to reject consumerism and resist social norms that limited their freedoms and imagination. In 1952, in Britain, a group of artists, known as the Independent Group, began to debate the societal changes and began including mass-produced advertising images and symbols in their art. Partly as a reaction to the dominance of painterly abstraction, and partly as a nod to the lack of dimension of these mass-produced images, the surfaces of their work became flat and smooth. Critic Lawrence Alloway defended this use of popular mass culture in the arts, and the term pop art appeared in ARC magazine for the first time in 1955. In America, artists Robert Rauschenberg and Jasper Johns helped bridge the gap between the abstract painters and the emerging pop artists. Their work retained the painterliness of abstraction, but utilized everyday images and objects. American pop artists reveled in the disparity between high and low art, rejecting the seriousness of abstract expressionism. They included even more irony and humor in their work than their British counterparts. Some of them had earned money as graphic designers or sign painters, and this influenced the images that naturally carried over into their work. While they wanted to distance themselves from the advertising materials that had cleverly co-opted fine art imagery, they nevertheless exploited mass production, both in the look and manufacture of their art. Over half a century has passed since the heyday of pop art. From that perspective, it seems like these artists were warning us about the dangers of runaway consumerism and a plastic throwaway culture. Warhol claimed that his work carried no meaning, and what you saw is what you got. He said that he just liked ordinary things, and that good business was the best art. Were these artists true cultural critics? Or did they simply want to connect with their current world?